to have you joining us today uh, as we uh, enjoy a Memorial Day weekend and, and uh, nice to have uh, weather that uh, you can get out and, and enjoy. Uh, so uh, looking forward to, to uh, enjoying some of that. But uh, this uh, weekend, as you, as you think of it, consider uh, the service that has been given and those who have, have devoted their lives uh, serving our nation and uh, the determination that they, they had to, to carry out their, their orders and, and, and what had to be done. And we were reminded that, that they sacrificed much in order for us to enjoy the freedom that we have today. Well, in light of what they have done and, and the sacrifices they've made, I want to uh, look at the sacrifices that... that uh, uh, Christ calls us to make us as we choose to serve Him. Recognizing, first of all, that, that, that the sacrifice first came from Him. That, that He loved us so much that, that He gave Himself for us. That, that God loved us so much that God sent His one and only Son. That we might have forgiveness because He died for us. So we recognize the sacrifice that He's made and then I'm going to look at Joshua to see how we must determine the choice, choice we're going to make in, in choosing who we will serve. Because the fact of the matter is uh, you will be what you choose to be. Uh, you will become that, that which you're, you're, you're working towards. It's, it's the choices that you make that, that determine who you are. My elementary school tried to get that uh, across uh, when we were children. There were, there were pictures on the wall of kids, and they were made up various uh, uh, things of food, and, and they chose the better foods, not the Little Debbies and the Brownies and the chocolate chips to make up uh, 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 those children pictures there. But the pictures were, were made out of fruit and vegetables and meat and the good and healthy things. And the slogan underneath it was, anybody else remember that? You are what you eat. Well, uh, you become what you choose to. You become what you choose to follow, who you follow, uh, where you choose to go. Uh, the choice is yours. And Joshua uh, uh, takes his time to, to, to gather them together and, and to gather the leaders together in Shechem there. And, and he shares with them uh, uh, just the importance of making this choice and the choice that, that he has made. And uh, I think there's some pictures there. And I believe that there is his uh, modern day, day Shechem, uh, which is Tel Balata. I may be saying that wrong, uh, but uh, 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 was an ancient city there, uh, located there at uh, uh, Mount Gerizim and, and, and Mount Ebal, the, uh, forming the, the walls there for the city. And uh, uh, modern day, there you see. Uh, and, and here's some of the ruins there that, that you can still go to today and have to see. Shechem was a place though, that was rich in history uh, in, in, in uh, biblical times there. Uh, there's, uh, there's many notable events going on there. Uh, matter of fact, you might remember uh, Joseph's bones were to be buried there, carried his bones back there. But uh, Abraham came into the promised land. He first camped at Shechem. And uh, there, God appeared to Abraham, confirmed his promise, and Abram, Abraham built an, an altar to the Lord there. Uh, when Jacob came back into the promised land, uh, he first came there, and he purchased land in Shechem, and, and he built an altar there, uh, calling the place El Elohi, Israel, meaning God, the, the God of Israel. Uh, Jacob's sons, uh, Simeon and uh, Levi, uh, deceptively lure the men of Shechem there uh, and uh, uh, in order to take the city there in Genesis chapter 34. And, and in a recommitment time in, in Jacob's life, God told him to, to go into Bethel and, and Jacob did so and, and he commanded all of his household to put, all their, put away all of their idols that Jacob took all those, all those idols and he buried them here at Shechem. Uh, many, many events though, uh, mark this as, as an important place and this is a very important time in the history of the people there as they gather together in Joshua chapter 24 if, if uh, you're looking for that 
Uh, by the way, if, if you're looking for Joshua, it's towards the front of the Old Testament. Or Genesis, Exodus, you get there with Leviticus, Numbers, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. So right in the midst of those first books there. Uh, and so in, in Joshua chapter 20, verse 4, Joshua chapter 24, verse 1, Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and their judges, and their officers, and they presented themselves before God. So God calls all the leaders together there. They, they, they get together here, and, and then he begins uh, speaking with the people, and, and, and he gives them the, uh, the narrative from, from what the Lord tells them. Thus says the Lord. And he talks about what the Lord has done for them and, and how the Lord has, has provided for them and, and taken for them. He, he goes, goes uh, taking care of them. He, he talks about uh, the, the plagues of, of Egypt that, that he brought upon them and, and how he was able to, to bring them out. He talks about the Red Sea experience. Uh, he talks about living in the wilderness for a very long time, he reminds them. And, and, and uh, the, the, all this, this goes on that... And, and, and he, he notes how, how the Lord has given them the land which they've had here, and it's a land described, if you jump down to verse 13 of chapter 24 in Joshua, it says, I gave you a land on which you had not labored, and cities which you had not built, and you lived in them, and you're eating in vineyards, and all of groves which you did not plant. Uh, so so the, the rich history that, that, that is theirs, and, and what God has provided, and now Joshua has drawn these people together to affirm and to, to share his commitment. And that comes in verse 14. So we'll pick up then in Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Uh, now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your father served beyond the river in Egypt. And serve the Lord. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, you, you know that where there is no vision, the people perish. Lord, likewise, where, where there is no Savior, the people are lost. Lost both in this world, but also for, for all eternity. Lord, we come together this morning. Lord, it's, it's my prayer that, that we will affirm the commitment made here by John that we are devoted to serving you. May we follow you with our heart. May we may give our, our times, our, our talents, of, and our, the gifts that you have provided us. Lord, may we return them to you cheerfully. May we lift up in prayer to you with our hearts as, as we pray for this nation, for our family, for our loved ones. Lord, we thank you for this word. Speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. At the end here, by the way, if you, if you looked in, in this up in, in your Bible, if you're, you're not on a phone or electronic device, you probably noted you're, you're, you're probably uh, on the last page of Joshua here. At, at the end of a, a very strong career, it has... He gathers them together and, and he shares this message with them. During Joshua's day of leadership, the, the Israelites had entered Canaan. They had defeated the enemy. Here, the Israelites, this, this was a good time. But Joshua realized, however, that the people faced many choices. Moses had warned that they should not become self-satisfied and complacent once they would taken over the cities of the pagan tribes. He insisted that they come clean and, and come through this without accepting the, the, the false religions, the, the gods of the other people, the, the idols that they worshipped. 
And Joshua, Joshua echoed many of the warnings that, that God had given. God had blessed the nation. And now the people were to remain true to Him. Uh, today we we stand at, at, at this point in our life, maybe at a crossroads in, in, in your life, and, and it's going to be determined by the choices that you make. Where you will go, what you will do, uh, uh, what as we, we move on from here, what direction we go. Are you willing to let God have His way? It's, it's against the backdrop here of what God has accomplished already. A, a God who acts. A, a, the testimony the, of, of what He has done to them. That, that we're called to be, we're, we're urged to be in awe of God and, and, and to recognize His sincerity and His faithfulness and to serve Him like so here the, the leaders were called together and, and Joshua makes it very specific in what he's saying, for God's sake and for your sake, make a decision. Make a decision. You know, uh, we, we don't like making decisions. That, that, that comes up to the point, and, 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 and I can have you raise your hand. Are you one who'd rather not make the decisions? You know? Uh, where are we going to eat? I don't know. You, you decide. And then, uh, what are we going to do? I, I don't know. Are, or are you the one that's, that is good at making the decisions? The fact of the matter is we have to make decisions. And even putting off the decision is making decision or, or, or failing to make the decision. You know, when you're driving down the highway, you either decide whether you're getting off at the exit or not. It might be right or wrong. But whether you decide or not, you're, you're going to go down the highway and, and uh, that decision is being made. And the same is true as well. You can either willfully decide, you can make decisions yourself, or as you're just kind of happening along in life, the decisions, they're going to be made. God was faithful. He had been very faithful to the Israelites. Now it was up to them to, to decide if they were going to be faithful. You're going to look at, uh, uh, if, if you're willing to, to make a positive decision to follow Christ, you're going to look at some of the choices that are involved in there. Uh, so some of the ingredients that are required for us to, to make uh, that firm decision. Uh, first of all, uh, you, you do, you, you have to make that choice. Yeah. Uh, making the choice is, is uh, required here. Uh, Goals are important. Uh, a, uh, in a graduation ceremony, the speaker said, be careful what you set as your goal in your life. Whatever you make up your mind to be, you probably will become. Therefore, make sure it's a worthy goal. Uh, people don't drift into success. You must plan for it. Uh, uh, the, the key to, to personal success uh, uh, is, is strategizing. It's, it's establishing some, some long, long range aims in life. Uh, planning ahead. Uh, you know, nothing's lost. So people are always moving forward. Uh, they, they're not wasting time. They're, they're always preparing uh, their work. They're, they're keeping their eyes and minds, their, their hearts open. They're, they're paying attention, uh, uh, absorbing experiences that will enrich them as a person, enrich them as a leader, uh, help them with the work that they're doing, uh, bringing them nearer to the completion of their dreams. So, purpose. There's a difference between one's goal in life and one's purpose for living. Purpose is, is a long range. Purpose is, is, is long range and, and has been described as it, it's like that pot at the end of the rainbow there. You're, you, you never quite reach it. It's always there ahead of you, right? It's like to reach it, wouldn't you? But it's your destiny. It's where you're headed. It's, it, it, it's where, where you're going and it sets in motion everything else if you're really following that purpose. Goals, however, they're, they're, they're finite, they're, they're specific, they're, they're, they're uh, generally an action that, that we intend to do and, and to carry out. And we can measure them and thereby judge our progress. Often they're, they're quantitative. They, they involve how much we intend to do and, and how often we intend to do it and, and when we intend to, intend to accomplish it. 
related to time. So we have to make the choices. And, and one of those choices is we have to decide to, to stop straddling the fence. You know, we, we have to make that decision, uh, making an intellectual choice that, that, that we're going to choose this day who we are going to serve. This means a change in lifestyle. This, this means genuine repentance of sin. This, uh, this is recognizing that change is tough, that, that repentance hurts, that, that it is painful and it's, it's hard. But going forward, it's, it's our choice. It is, it is our choice that we make. And so going forward is, is taking that choice and putting it into action. And goals. Goals means hard work. Too many people fail to, to realize that their goals because they've not learned to, to labor and to wait. Someone asked uh, uh, William Pitt uh, the question, and, and as Prime Minister of England, they asked him, you know, what is the chief character, what is the chief characteristic necessary to, to, to serve as he serves as the Prime Minister of England? And, and, and his answer was patience and the, and the speaker said well what is the second requirement and, and and he paused intellectually and then said again patience and so the speaker continued asking the questions and and he said what is the third and and mr pitt again replied patience patience hey you, you under what you understand what patience is patience in, in, involves that waiting time but it also involves the stamina of, of being prepared to to wait for for what is necessary paul was constantly seeking to know more of christ's will for his life he he knew the goal that was constantly before him and, but he recognized that he had not attained it yet he kept on working for it Many of us like to give up easily. And, and, and I think part of this is, is our, our uh, computer-driven world where, where if we can't accomplish it with a click of, uh, with a, click of a mouse, uh, uh, then, then we're not happy. See, see, back when we were kids, you know, toys, you had to physically uh, maintain them and, and take care of them. And, and, and you know how it is with computers. It's great when you're done with a computer, you know, you just click, you know, exit, and everything goes back away. You know, you don't have to put the video tapes away, the, the video games, whatever, you know. All right there. We, we would build things. You'd, you'd have electric race cars and, and tracks, and, and you had to maintain them. You had to take care of those things. Are you committed today to accomplishing the goals, the purposes? Have you set them? Are you working towards them? Thomas Edison noted that, 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 you know, you have to be willing to be persistent. He said, one must fix his mind with, with persistence, begin searching for that which he seeks, making use of all the accumulated knowledge of the subject which he has or can acquire from others. He must keep searching no matter how many times he may meet with disappointment. He must refuse to be influenced by the fact that somebody else may have tried the same idea without success. He must keep himself sold on the idea that the solution of his problem exists somewhere and that he will find it. I'm thankful this morning that he was determined to find the solution. Now, someone wisely said that the trouble with most people is that they quit before they start. And that may be true. Are you determined? Joshua was determined. He, he knew who he was serving. He knew... Uh, and he made the choice, and he was following through with this. But he warned the people. He, he warned the people that this was not a light decision. See, one must be willing to exert influence on others instead of being pushed around by them. 
You realize that if you're going to choose to follow Christ, then, then, then you have to, to recognize that, that, that rather than being pushed around by the world telling us that, that we should keep our God in a box and we should not bother the world with Him, and we should keep our ideas over here and, and, and not try to infiltrate, not try to help people with them because, uh, well, they just don't work with society today. The fact of the matter is if we're going to follow God, if we're going to serve Him, we're going to trust Him if we're going to share Him with others. If we believe He is a solution not only to, to the struggles, the problems that we face, but, but the struggles that others face, then we have to be willing to exert influence over others. Not just being pushed around. Joshua led the people. Joshua led the people to the promised land. And, and here he's leading the people by sharing the determination that he's going to make. And boldly he proclaims, do what you want to do, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He took the leadership position. He said, as leader of my house, my determination is that we're going to serve the Lord. He said, starting with me. Starting. So that is the determination that he made. And, and the people follow and, and echo it. The people say, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods, verse 16. Uh, for the Lord is uh, the Lord our God is he who brought us up our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and, and who did these great signs in our sight and preserved us through all the way in which we went and among the people through whose midst we passed. And they uh, uh, continued to affirm the Lord. The, the Lord drove out from the wars these people. Even the Amorites who lived in the land. We also will serve the Lord. For he is our God. And so what does Joshua say? Joshua says, alright, that's great. Come along. Let's just uh, uh, go on and, and, and live and, and, and let's serve. And, and, and you'd think that Joshua would just be delighted and thrilled at the, at the determination that the people had made here. The decision they made that they're going to follow. But what is Joshua's response? Look at verse 19. Then Joshua said to the people, you will not be able to serve the Lord. For he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you and do you harm and consume you after he has done good to you. You know the way to challenge a person? This works really well. Tell them what they can't do. Tell them what they can't do. You can't do it. You won't make it. You're not capable of it. Joshua says, I'm the leader. I'm going to do this. But you, there's no way you can do this. Joshua didn't want them to come along easily. Matter of fact, I don't even think he was so greatly concerned when they came along as not as he was concerned with making the declaration that no matter what, this is what I'm going to do. And that's important if you're going to make this decision. Because if you're making this decision, it's your decision, not what everyone else does. You see, you make that decision in spite of what goes on around you. And so his message to the people, you can't do it. Most important, you have to choose Jesus. This is, this is not a choice to, to be made lightly. He told them, do what you want to do. I'm going to serve the Lord. So, when you make this choice, then you have to put everything in line behind that choice. That's what he shares with you. If you're going to make this decision, you, know, you better follow that decision. Because God's not going to allow you to live in this way. Uh, even, even our goals that, that seem secular and, and non-spiritually oriented, they, they have to be in harmony with the will of God and, and, and in Christ. Uh, uh, otherwise, they're, they're futile and, and might even be dangerous to the direction we're trying to go. And that's what he warns them. If, if you're not going to follow him, it, this could be bad for you. Because if you choose to follow God and, and you make that your conviction and, and you get off track, well, God, he might just send you a correction and you may not like it. This is your choice. This has to be your choice. 
and recognize if you're making it, it's a serious commitment. When Jesus comes into our, when our life, when, when we devote ourselves to him, when, when we allow him to, to be the Lord of our life, we receive a personal salvation. But we also receive a power for achieving our aim. As, as Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in Philippians chapter 4. And, and someone's translated this, you know, in, in him who pours power into me, uh, I'm, I'm able to do anything. We, we go forward and we have the strength of God in us to help. But also there's a public declaration here. We're making a commitment publicly. We've chosen to follow Christ and, and He is enabling us and helping us. But this is a public commitment that we make. And, and we have to be willing to go on record. Willing to go out in the public and, and be, uh, go out in public with our faith. You remember these words? Jesus says, He that denies me before men, him will I deny before my Father, which is in heaven. That's a tough statement, isn't it? We're not undercover Christians. We must be willing to identify ourselves as, as one of his disciples. Even as we're warming around the fire. Even as a ridicule, taunting, and crucifying. The decisions we make, the, the places we go, we need to recognize. And matter of fact, a, a good way to understand it is, is, is bumper stickers and Christian t-shirts, right? Have you seen some people that ought to turn that t-shirt inside out so we didn't know that they were supposed to be a Christian? Or are you ever like me? You caught somebody doing something really nice and, and wonderful, and you said, man, you, that's just wonderful. I love your t-shirt. And they said, oh, that teacher, I just got that for free. I don't know what it means. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, on the negative side of that, uh, you see some people driving and think, well, you, you should peel that Christian bumper sticker off your, your car. Right? By the way, have you noticed people driving lately? Uh, we had to take Michael's car in for tires, and it was not in good shape, so we drove slow and carefully, and, and, and we were probably creating a log jam. Matter of fact, I think there was at least three cars behind us, and the cars behind us, most of them were social distancing, I guess. They, they were being very careful. Are you willing to publicly declare your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? You might be ridiculed. People may look at your life and say, well, that doesn't agree with the commitment that you've made. And, and, and you might have to make some changes. Are you ready to live up to it? Are you ready to, to give your all to Jesus for your whole life? See, it requires a public commitment. Sometimes we don't want to do that. Fear stands in our way. Fear of, of, of people being too emotional. Fear that, that, that maybe this is, we're, we're oversimplifying things. Or, or, or maybe fear that, that it's too complicated and, and we can't understand it. And, and the fact of the matter is theology, trying to understand God, trying to understand His Word, it is very deep. And it's going to take a lifetime of learning. And I don't think anybody will ever obtain it recognize the full power and beauty of God's grace, His majesty, and His wisdom. But the neat part about it is, it's God enabled us to come to Him as a little child. That's all it takes. It's a simple process. Other times we say, well, it's, it's just not a good time. Maybe someday I'll accept that. The truth of the matter is there's, there's never a better time than the present. You know, Satan, Satan always has a way of, of trying to put off the decision of, of, of trying to stop us. But, but today we're at the point where, where we have to make a choice. And, and whether you've already chosen to follow him or, or whether this is the first time and, and you're considering, it takes work, and it takes resolve, and it takes determination. We've got to stop standing in the middle. You know, remember, John 
warns the church of Revelation. Uh, uh, revelation there, that those who are neither hot or cold, that the Lord would prefer we were cold rather than lukewarm, but but better still that, it, that we 